For this simple ocean beach watercolor sketch painting, all I'm doing is laying out a very simple sketch and then also the sky. And I'm using uh, Daniel Smith Cobalt Teal Blue, which is the lightest blue. Then I'm using a Thalo Cyanide Blue, which is by Sennelier. And then I'll drop in a little bit of Imperial Purple, which is Daniel Smith. And this is gonna create the sky. So on this four by six piece of Arches paper, I am dropping in water uh, just in the sky area, and I'm leaving some of those areas uh, blank because I want to let the water run by itself and to practically paint the sky by itself too. And the only thing I'm gonna do after dropping these colors in, this is uh, cobalt teal blue, by the way, and then I'm using a little bit of that thalamine, uh, thalo cyanine blue, which is on my palette to the right at the very top. You can see that blue in there. And I'm gonna drop that in there and let this spread out. And then I'm going to wet my brush and wipe it off so I can clean it off and I'm gonna soften those clouds up. Here's a little bit of that Imperial Purple, which when it blends down, it just looks like a very vibrant blue sky. So to create the bottom of the cloud, I actually use a tiny bit of neutral just to drop in the bottom and let it kind of blend up because I put water upwards. And when I do that, and then I put a paint at the very bottom of where that wet area is, it's just gonna pull it upwards. Uh, the paint will move in the direction where the water is. So I'm just softening it up as well. And you'll see me dab a, a sponge. That's that's a very cheap sponge. When I want to clean my brush off, I'll drip it in water. Then I'll dab it on my sponge to dry it off. And that way I don't have a soaking wet paintbrush. If I had too much water in my brush, when I laid down paint, like where I am right now, it would cause a problem because it's going to cause what they call blooms. And blooms is where um, you have more water in the brush than you do on the uh, paper and it will push that water into the um, paint that's drying and it'll cause these blooms. They, it's a technique that you could use, um, but if you do not want blooms, it'll create a mess. So um, I'm watching my water and to paint to how wet is my paper ratio. To create the water line, I use cobalt teal right there at the very top. And then this greenish tone that's down below, uh, I actually like the horizon uh, teal blue that Holbein has. But with this one, what I did was I added a tiny bit of green into this thalo cyanine, and then I got this greenish tone. I didn't need to have it uh, too bright, but I want to create the illusion of these different colors 
that are within the ocean and that's one way you can do it i'll drop in some thalocyanine blue as well and uh, that's going to make this more vibrant and i really liked creating the water darker than what the sky was i, I felt it really made it pop When water gets close to the shoreline, there's always going to be sand underneath of those waves. So don't be afraid, but I laid down a little bit of this yellow ochre and gamboji yellow into the sand. Um, I kept it super light and I have a tiny bit of uh, sienna brown in there too. Um, but all I'm doing is laying this in there very, very lightly. You don't need much um, paint mixed in with your brush and the water and what that does is create a light type of sand i'm going to let that dry really really well and then i'm going to add in uh, some of my blue ocean colors on top that's glazing i have one color and a bottom layer and i want that yellow because i want it to glow through the water and then later when it's very dry i'm putting a blue tone and what it does is create this beautiful illusion of the sand that's underneath the water. So that's how you do that. You're also going to see that at the tip of the wave on the beach, I'm doing my best to leave that alone because you have white foam that happens when a, a wave comes crashing in. So block that out. Uh, guys, you can always use a white wax crayon if you'd like to do that. And you can take the crayon and draw and I would do it a couple times, but draw where the white is, that's where the foam is. And what'll happen is that wax will block out the paint and the water that I'm bringing in. And uh, it's, it's like a self masking and you can't take that off. Uh, now I have painted white on top of it, but that's one way you can create it. Right now I'm uh, creating some shadows. There are some areas that'll come in on this painting and where it's the lightest yellow, that's where the sun rays are going to be coming through. And then there's some darker tones. And I'm using a little bit of opera pink mixed in with these yellows. It's like a gamboji or an Aurelion yellow. Very bright and they're also transparent, which is great. Because if I wanted to put some pink colors on top of it, um, you'd be able to see it. If it's not transparent, you're not going to paint anything on top of that paint. Um, we'll talk about that in another painting, but I'm adding a little bit of that opera pink in order to create a darker type of orange. And this is going to help show me where the shadows are going to be uh, later on. And then as I move upward, like towards the uh, horizon line, I'm darkening that up just a little bit. So I have a contrast.
Daniel Smith green gold is the main green that I'm putting in here and then I'm putting a little bit of a brownish tone um, to mix in with it and what I'm doing what I'm looking for is for those colors to blend together and do their own magic which is uh, they granulate so as they begin to mix in together by themselves my paper and my uh, water on my brush it's not too wet I've got enough water in there where the paints will flow and then I'm just laying in some of the greens the other green that I have on there is a green appetite genuine that's uh, the middle type of green so all I'm doing is dropping the, these colors in now this is the green gold again right there that's the green gold and if you wanted to make that brighter use quinacridone gold uh, that would work really well too quinacridone, quinacridone gold when it's super light is almost yellow and when you keep using it over and over it's going to turn like a golden brown so anyway I'm letting these mix in and if you look at the top of that rock with that hill you can see how those browns are now blending in all by themselves into where those greens are it kind of creates a de uh, grassy texture I like it it's a small painting I'm not going to touch that when I'm done I'm just going to let that be For the rocks, I'm dropping in uh, dark browns that I created myself, and that was with a dark blue like ultramarine blue deep plus a burnt umber. That would do the job really well. So I'm simply dropping those in, meaning I've wet down the rock and I'm dropping these colors in. And then I decided to have some fun and I've dropped my green gold right onto that rock. Sometimes there's moss growing on rocks. And then the rock that I'm painting right now, I left some of the white just to uh, show some sunshine. And then also rocks sometimes on the very top, they've got a blue. So I used the cobalt teal blue on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and sketch in some of my rocks right now. And um, I'm mixing up some grays. That's what you see me doing. Um, and I'm mixing up to see what I'd like. But... Uh, you can see how this is still wet on wet when I put some of that black in it's just spreading out on its own so that's a wet on wet and um, I'm trying to focus to let the paint blend itself I don't want to work on it I just want to uh, let this be one of my sketches that I practice just dropping the color in and let it do its work and that's it
The palm trees, I just simply use some of my gray or brownish mixes to sketch in some of the trunks and some of the branches. And then I'm going to add in my greens. Green Gold and Green Appetite Genuine are great ones to use. And one of the things that I did was to take my brush. If you look at the tips of the hairs, it looks a little spread out. That's because it is. And I basically pushed my brush down into the paint and I caused it to uh, twirl it and caused it to spread the hairs out. And that's how I wound up getting um, this brush to look like scraggly and ugly on the bottom. But look what it does. It creates great ferns, you know, these little strands. And it's a lot easier than me painting those all in. So you can rewind for a second. You can see that I am twisting my brush on the palette to spread those hairs out right there. And that's how I got those. Um, that's how I got the hairs of the brush to separate so I could just go ahead and sketch these in real fast. I'm going to continue to add in the shadows. Now you saw me earlier where I have a darker orange where some of those shadows are. Right now I'm using purple. Purple is a wonderful color to add in uh, for shadows on a beach. You can use a purplish tone or you can use a blue tone. I do like the purple better because sand has got a yellow tone and yellow and purple are opposite of each other on the water color wheel. And uh, when I'm looking at colors, you know, how, how you can create um, a watercolor wheel or you can um, buy one. When you look at the opposites, um, what will what happen is the eye will be attracted to wanting to look and see what this is. Um, the eye seems to like opposites. So this is one way to catch people's attention. And I'm adding that purple into the water if I need it or I'll have it on the shoreline by the rocks, but basically I'm just sketching in those really quick.
Everything from this point out is going to be final details. I'm using a little bit of my PH Martin, which is a white, it looks like you could call it a white blocker. It actually is white gouache and I am using this more and more. It's not in a tube, it's in a little jar. And I am using that to add in some of my white foam and I don't have a lot of water on this paintbrush. And there's a point where towards this uh, shoreline that's closest to you and I, you just take the side of your brush. I, I call this the jagged. <laughs> I just take it and I kind of like push my brush in and I'm creating these jagged lines. And then I can also take the side of the brush and I could scrape some of that white on there because the paper's bumpy. When I scrape it, it'll create a uh, detail. It won't be that I'm covering up the whole paper to look white. It just will show these white scratchy uh, types of textures, which looks awfully um, really cool too. So, but this way I just wanted to go ahead and um, put that distinct shoreline in. This is such a small painting. so. I just need a little bit to suggest what I want on it. And then I'm gonna to move towards finishing up the rock details, maybe a few little more rocks. And then I'm going to also splatter. And when I go to splatter, I'm going to cover up the water and the um, sky area and that little um, palm island, you know, thing that's in the background. But I need to create sand. And one of the ways I can do that is to splatter, I'll splatter usually a little bit of yellow ochre, a tiny, tiny bit of neutral, which is a blackish tone, and then I'll uh, put in a little bit of orange. And those colors are really good to um, provide you a little bit of a sand texture. And um, that's about it. So enjoy the rest of this video and listen to the music. I, I love relaxing music when I'm painting. So I hope that's what I provide for you. Um, but it's always good to have you guys on here. I so appreciate you and I appreciate your support. And I hope you have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. That's what weekend it is here in the United States. We have many friends from India, other states and nations that join in. So really good to be with you all. Have a wonderful weekend.